Welcome to the latest episode of Griffin Hall. Now, uh, for multiple episodes, I've been telling you that I need to begin construction of the workshop, and then I didn't. <laughs> like a poorly planned family road trip, uh, I keep realizing that I forgot just one more thing before I actually pull out of the driveway. Uh, last time, I realized that I was still missing some materials, and so I uh, crafted an airship and I flew off into the wild blue yonder to find uh, the biomes that I was pretty sure would contain the materials I needed. But uh, aside from finding a bunch of diorite that I can use to uh, craft an even bigger bunch of andesite, uh, the mission was a lot of fun, but generally a failure. And that's even when I discount the fact that I fell to my death once. However, after returning to the base, uh, I thought I was ready to start digging out the workshop levels, uh, but realized that if I was going to install the storage and logistics system at the same time, uh, which would be easiest and most efficient, uh, I was going to need a lot more quartz than what I had on hand, and uh, my only source of quartz at the moment is in the nether, so uh, once again, I will postpone the efforts on the workshop, and I will return to the nether to gather enough quartz for the logistics system, and then I will finally, well, probably, begin excavating the workshop level. Uh, lately, my goals have been pretty simple and few in number, but they've taken a, a lot of time to complete, and this time around, they require a lot of grunt work as well. Um, I need to gather at least 100 quartz, and I need to uh, excavate the workshop and storage levels, uh, and that is going to take quite a bit of time and effort. So I'll get right to it. Um, as you may remember, I built a small fortification in the nether that allows me to safely come and go. Uh, as an added bonus, I've dug a little tunnel that runs directly to a blaze spawner, which assures me uh, of a reliable and relatively safe source of uh, blazes for blaze burners and blaze rods for brewing. It's not exactly Costco, but it is mighty convenient. However, I designed this fortification in the nether to be self-contained and to keep the bad guys out and to generally prevent them from spawning so that I have a nice safe space to be in. Uh, of course, a design that's so effective at keeping them out is equally effective at keeping me in. So uh, I will need to dig out an exit that will let me go walk about in the nether. As I do my groundhog impersonation and stick my head up out of my burrow, uh, I find the remainder of the old cobblestone casing uh, for where I first arrived in this instance of the nether. Now, uh, when I removed the old portal, I left the cobblestone shell to provide an emergency shelter if necessary. And in another burst of good luck, uh, I found that there is a reasonably sized cluster of glowstone nearby, and surprisingly, it's not dangling over a deadly cliff or a sea of lava. Now, uh, I recently created a silk touch enchantment, which I applied to my netherite pick, so I can grab the glowstone intact. I have not spent a lot of time in a modded version of the nether before now, and now that I'm here, I found them to be even more challenging and potentially dangerous than the old nether. Uh, in this case, I have found a lot of variation in block types and a very broken landscape which makes judging distances and open space tricky, uh, especially in this poor lighting. Plus, it looks like there must be an Enderman clown car nearby and they just keep pouring out of it. Uh, add in a steady stream of roaming wither skeletons for some variety and you have a perfect storm for bad accidents and fiery deaths. It's not exactly the way one likes to kick back and relax after a day of real-life office space shenanigans. And for added fun, there are additional obstacles like briars, which cause damage when you brush against them, and beautiful fiery tulips that will light you up if you touch them. Uh, it's just a typical walk in the park, if that park happened to be on the lowest plane of hell. Uh, in the right light and context, though, it can even look lovely. Uh, but you wouldn't want to build a summer home here. And with that said, there's just two little quartz visible on the surface to make the danger worthwhile. Uh, I'm going to go back underground and explore the mines where we found the blaze spawner. Uh, I think there's a pretty good chance of finding quartz and other goodies down there while limiting the risk of uh, random baddies and giving me plenty of places to retreat and use for cover if necessary. Score! Another lucky break. Um, in vanilla nether fortresses, the, the nether wart patches you come across are much smaller than this one. Uh, but here there's enough uh, soul sand for at least one full size field and there's even a fair bit of actual nether wart as well. So um, this means that we have all the bits uh, we need to go into the potion brewing biz. So uh, if you have the time, I have the potions. 
The surface is feeling too hostile for uh, running around without a little more infrastructure. And the amount of quartz that's readily available in the mines is kind of, sort of, enough. Uh, but it's clear that I really need to expand my foothold in the nether. So it will be easier in the future to build infrastructure like gates, roads, and bridges, which would in turn allow easier and relatively safer access to nether resources. Uh, therefore, I'm making the executive decision to postpone, yet again, the excavation of the workshop so that I can use this time to complete at least the vertical access shaft here in the nether. Uh, I will build up from bedrock to bedrock. Uh, this will not be the full column construction I mentioned in a previous episode, but it will provide a secure access shaft across uh, all the vertical layers of the nether. Now, in some later episode, I will expand each level to provide space for whatever equipment or activities I think I will need. And where that expansion is open to the air or the surface, I will provide additional fortifications, secure gates, and other features to provide safer access to the nether environment and the goodies it contains. Building the central shaft in the nether is going to be somewhat similar to what I did in the overworld. Uh, I plan to use nether brick blocks, and to process netherrack into nether bricks, I will need to smelt them. And since time passes only wherever I happen to be, and I happen to be in the nether, uh, I will need to set up a small and somewhat mobile smelting operation here in the nether. Now, a side effect of the smelting process is that it takes 64 netherrack to make 16 nether brick blocks, which is ultimately a loss of material. Now, the design for the central shaft uses a lot of nether brick blocks, and in fact, because of the 4 to 1 reduction in blocks through smelting and crafting, and because the shaft will run through a bit of open space and through layers of non netherrack, uh, I will probably need to quarry some netherrack from a nearby space, preferably from a place that I'll need to eventually open up anyway. Now, I've just realized a serious vulnerability around my reliance on walls of gravel to hold back the lava sea, uh, at least in an area frequented by endermen. It seems that the stupid endermen are removing blocks of gravel which then fall or settle uh, leaving a space at the top of the wall through which liquid hot magma is allowed to stream down into the safe space I created. Um, that generally sucks. Now I should have seen that one coming but on the other hand if they keep this up they may wind up filling that space with lava and then they won't be able to grab any more gravel without burning in the liquid hot magma. I'm a little conflicted about that. Not. Nah. I need a bunch of netherrack, and I know that eventually my fortifications will include the central shaft that I'm currently working on, but also the surrounding eight modules, so I'll know that I'll need to excavate this space sooner or later anyway. Uh, there is, of course, the threat of a breach in the ceiling and having the uh, lava sea come pouring down on my head, but I'm pretty sure that we're far enough down that I can excavate this level safely. Now, it is the next level up that will be the problem. Uh, eventually, this level, and specifically the centralized space, will be a railway hub, including the platforms for loading and unloading. Uh, I don't know what's going on exactly, but the endermen down here seem to be trying to swarm me. Uh, I don't have any ender treats in my pockets, so I don't really understand why I'm getting zerg, but there is a bright side to this, in that I do need a bunch of ender pearls for finding strongholds, building elevators, and the odd teleportation need, so I'll, I'll happily exploit these ender swarms. Now, it took a while, but I have uh, finally reached the surface, sort of. Um, the surface can be a little tricky to define in the nether, but uh, either way, at this point, I'll be more exposed while working. And uh, while the endermen and the odd wither skeleton are no big deal, it seems that the gas have been virtually absent up to this point, but now all of a sudden they seem to be popping out on a regular basis. So uh, getting knocked around by fireballs in an environment where uh, a single misstep could plunge me into liquid hot magma, it's not necessarily my idea of fun. You may or may not remember that this uh, cobblestone shell is left over from my original portal in the nether. I have since modified it to make it into a little defense bunker for now, but it will eventually get eaten up when I expand the central shaft into a larger, more useful fortified column. So uh, as you can see here, I've gained a bit more altitude and I've risen far enough that the, uh, the wandering endermen and the wither skeletons can no longer wander into the work area, uh, nor can they even reach me for that matter. However, uh, gas are now the only real threat and they're really no big deal if you keep your eyes and ears open uh, and your bow ready. Well, uh, I did it. Now the, uh, the central access shaft stretches from bedrock to bedrock and uh, for now, I have almost 300 quartz 
and that should take care of my needs for uh, for a while. But at some point in the relatively near future, uh, I will return to the nether and start displacing lava and uh, expanding the vertical shaft into what I think we'll probably call uh, Fort Defiance. The position of the fort in the nether is interesting. It's uh, kind of hard to move around now, but after I get established and start expanding the infrastructure, I'm pretty excited about what we'll find and what I can build out there. And uh, all of that will proceed much smoother once we get the workshop dug out and built up, including a brewing station. Uh, after all, a few fire resistance potions will go a long ways toward making uh, nether exploration relatively safe. Uh, er. In the meanwhile, work on the hull itself has not completely stopped, uh, but progressed a little bit at the surface where I'm producing plenty of materials and food. Uh, there's just so much to do out there and so many options to choose from. However, uh, I think I truly have what I need to bang out the workshop area, so that is where I'm headed next. Really, seriously. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I mean it this time. Uh, regardless, I hope you're interested in seeing what comes next. Uh, I know that I am. And I hope this finds you and yours in uh, good health, good spirits, and perhaps a touch of good fortune. So I will see you next time at Griffin Hall. Take care and cheers.